welcome uh, those who have just joined us, bringing some pretty spectacular weather uh, with them, Prime Minister Modi, uh, President Ramaphosa, President Moon, in just a minute. And the President of South Africa. And the President uh, of South Africa, as, 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 I, as I said earlier. Oh, you did? I, I did not. I, did, I, I, I certainly did. Uh, so, <laughs> but you get mentioned twice, so. I'll go over that again. Let me tell you, we're, we're delighted. I'll, this friend, I'll, I'm, I'm going to say we're, we're, we're joined by Prime Minister Modi. Uh, this year Let's one. go. In a weekend interview, Vladimir Putin laughed at the suggestion that you had called him a killer. Is that still your belief, sir, that he is a killer? And I'll continue the trend if you don't mind of asking a second question. Do you believe if he does agree to cooperate, then what kind of a challenge do you find yourself in? How would you ever trust him? And if Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify, what do you say to Vladimir Putin? <laughs> to answer the first question, <laughs> I'm laughing too. They actually, I... Well, look, I mean, he has made clear that... Uh, uh, The answer is, I believe he has in the past essentially acknowledged that he was, uh, there are certain things that he would do or did do. But look, um, when I was asked that question on air, I answered it honestly. But it's not much of a, I, I, I don't think it matters a whole lot in terms of this next meeting we're about to have. You mentioned your sit down with Vladimir Putin. And, and Russian aggression that came up in your conversations today. I'd like to ask you two questions, if I may, on that front. Um, is it your sense walking into this meeting that Americans back home shouldn't expect much in terms of an outcome? Could you provide some specifics on what a successful meeting would look like to you? Are there going to be specific concessions you want Putin to make? And then I'll just give you my, my follow-up right now. You've met Vladimir Putin before. What have you learned about him that informs how you approach this sit-down with him? And what's your mindset walking into a meeting with a former KGB agent who you've said has no soul? I'll tell you all that when it's over. Look, I've been doing this a long time. The last thing anyone would do is negotiate in front of the world press as to how he's going to approach a critical meeting with another adversary and or someone who could be an adversary. It's the last thing I'm going to do. But I will tell you this. I'm going to make clear to President Putin that there are areas where we can cooperate if he chooses. And if he chooses not to cooperate and acts in a way that he has in the past relative to cybersecurity and some other activities, then we will respond. We will respond in kind. There need not be. We should decide where it's in our mutual interest and the interest of the world to cooperate and see if we can do that. And the areas where we don't agree, make it clear what the red lines are. I have met with him. He's bright. He's tough. And uh, I have found that uh, he is a, uh, as they say, when he used to play ball, a worthy adversary. But the fact is that uh, I will be happy to talk with you when it's over, not before. We can work together with Russia. For example, uh, in, uh, in Libya, we should be opening up the, 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 the passes to be able to go through and provide uh, provide uh, um, food assistance and economic assi I mean, vital assistance to uh, a population that's in real trouble. I think I'm going to try very much hard to, uh, it, it is, and by the way, there's places where, I shouldn't be starting off and negotiating in public here, but let me say it this way. Russia has engaged in activities which are, we believe are contrary to international norms. But they have also um, uh, bitten off some real problems they're going to have trouble chewing on. And, for example, the rebuilding of uh, 
of, uh, of Syria, of, uh, of Libya, of, you know, this is, they're there. And as long as they're there without the ability to bring about some order in the, in the region, and you can't do that very well without providing for the basic economic needs of people. So I'm hopeful that we can find an accommodation that where we can save the lives of people in, for example, in, uh, in Libya, uh, that, uh, how you doing? This is Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. And this is just a off-the-top reaction video to Biden's uh, summit meeting recently. And I gotta say, I feel like the dude just really personally messed it all up, man. From the fact that, as an American, I'm watching our commander, our supposed commander-in-chief, because to me, he's not the actual president. That's just neither here nor there at this point. However, he's there representing the American people. And Boris Johnson is sitting there just waving him off like three times, like a child. But here's the backstory to that. He actually was waving him off because he already said the name of the only um, African or um, Afri you know, African world leader there. And he still got the guy's name wrong. So Boris just basically, every time that Biden tried to intercept, uh, Bi Boris just hushed him like you would a five-year-old. And to me, I was just like, that's just flat out embarrassing for our country. Neither here nor there. But it went farther than that. Then he got Syria and, Larry, uh, Syria and Libya messed up again. Um, you know, doing his whole entire, well, you know, uh, uh, kind of thing. So I just feel like the man's falling apart right before our eyes. He's already fallen down the steps multiple times. There's numerous things leading up to this. So I got to ask, because we're almost two minutes in. There was a theory a long time ago that Kamala Harris was going to become president um, probably around like, you know, latter of August. And this is due to the fact that whenever they got into office... Harris said that Biden already agreed to step down if he was seen medically unfit for the position. And I got to say, between the dementia signs, uh, his eyes being sunken in, sunken in, losing track of time, losing track of what he's saying, falling down the stairs, yesterday's thing, I'm starting to think that that might actually happen a lot sooner than people actually think. That's just my opinion. Um... So I think that we might end up seeing that probably here pretty soon. I don't know if they're going to officially talk about it or not, but I know a lot of people are starting to question it, it seems like, even on the left. And with all that said, um, I got to say this. Recently, I had an encounter with somebody <clears throat> who feels like you're not a real Christian if you supported Trump. You know, because the Democrats are such a Christian uh, political party, right? I mean, really, let's look at the facts. What has the Democratic Party done that is biblical belief? They stand by abortion, right? They stood, a lot of them wanted to lower down the uh, dating age the, down to a minor range. You know what I mean? They want to lower down drugs and make them legal, uh, which would increase the addiction rates across America and basically already has in the Democratic uh, zones to where they have done that, such as in Washington. Like the death rate from um, overdose is just crazy high right now as a result of that. They've opened up the borders and as a result, fentanyl is flooding the United States and drug overdose deaths are increasing rapidly as a result. Um, I got to say... Not too much of that is really biblical standpoint that they're actually standing for. The sheer fact is, I mean, they really strongly, strongly support abortion. And that's not Christian to me uh, because that's killing life. But this isn't the episode for that. I just wanted to point out my, my philosophy on you can't come at me with you're not a Christian if you supported the GOP, Trump, or the Republican. You can't do that. Because there is too many things that the Democratic Party has fought so hard for and too many things that the Democratic Party has actually done that flat out is not biblical whatsoever. 
In fact, the Democratic Party has a problem with us saying God. The Democratic pro Party has a problem with us praying in schools. The Democratic Party has a problem with worship. They're the same party that arrested pastors who were obeying at the time the COVID restrictions and fined them for worshiping. That's the same party that did that. So how are you going to tell me that they're a Christian party? Now, I'm not saying that everybody that's a Democrat is not a Christian. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the things that the Democratic Party are fighting for are not biblical. So that is the reason why you cannot come at me with that argument whatsoever. There is just no way that you're going to be able to blend that argument with me because there's too many things that they've done even recently. So that's not that's not going to fly. So that was the main point of this. I'm trying to figure out what everybody else is, how you guys are actually feeling after that summit. Because I've seen a couple clips really come out, and I'm telling you, they're all bad. I'm going to attach some, actually, to this episode. And that's what this reaction video is. It's primarily just about the summit, because I got to tell you, dude, he blew it completely. And that's just my opinion. And it just shows even more favor towards the GOP. It really does because it shows the failure of the Democrats. In fact, the Democratic Party right now, if you want to be honest, is actually shaking in our boots because they actually think about the mass exodus out of California, the, max, the mass exodus out of New York and Detroit and other Democratic cities. And majority of those people are actually switching to the GOP party. And if they're not switching to the GOP party, they're switching over to the independent. And like I said before, that still can play in the favor in 2022. It could still play in favor because if they vote by the bills, that could still play in favor to the GOP in 2022, which will make it easier in 2024. And to everybody that thinks that every single Republican supporter is for Trump, yes, I would love it if Trump ran. I ain't gonna deny that. I just don't think that it's that plausible. I really don't. <clears throat> the only reason why is this New York case thing where they got all these uh, attorneys basically digging for every little detail they can on his life to try to hold him up in a federal case. Because if they could get him in a federal case, if memory serves me right, he can't run. And I think he knows that. So I think he's making backup plans. So honestly, I think what he's about right now is putting the people that uh, the GOP needs in the places that we need them for 2022, which is going to make it easier for us in 2024. For what, and I'll be honest, I really do hope if Trump doesn't run, I really do hope Candace Owens sticks with it and gets serious about running because I know that she has come out and officially announced that she's interested in running for presidency in 2024. And I'm telling you, I hope she does because I would vote for it. I really would in a New York minute. <clears throat> the woman knows what she's talking about. She's brilliant about the stuff she says. And everything that she says is honestly the truth. She's just laying it out there flat out for you. And it's just the truth. So you can take it or leave it with that. But that's just my personal opinion. So I hope that it's either Trump or Candace Owens that runs in 2024. But I honestly do hope that Candace Owens runs. So I do find it humorous that a lot of them just think that instantly. If you're still a Republican, they just instantly think that you're all about Trump. And I'm like, there's so many other issues going on. Uh, one, a lot of Republicans are trying to that are trying to figure out ways to clean up the GOP party in general because of all the white rhinos that were in there. And we still have a lot of them in there that are causing problems. There is a lot of the younger Republicans that are kind of wish-washy. And there's some solid uh, younger Republicans too, so I'm just I'm just trying to be honest about it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I do think though that based on what people are seeing right now, if you're really paying attention to the news, based on everything that they've said up to this point, okay, I honestly do think that it's plausible for a huge red wave in 2024 and uh, uh, 2022 and 2024. Sorry, I just woke up a little bit ago and I've already done, I've already hopped on one stream earlier. So uh, <clears throat> at any rate, <clears throat> that's the reason why I think 2022 is so pivotal because we need these, we need the conservative can candidates that we need in the positions that we need to make 2024 happen. 
So everybody, don't lose sight on your local city elections and your local state elections. Uh, pay attention to your state elections. Pay attention to them. They're vital for 2024. They really are. To me, it's uh, more important than it ever has been before. So pay attention to your local politics because it's more crucial this year than it's ever been before to lead up to 2024. So this is just going to be an, a, a reaction video to the Biden summit, which I feel like I've already done uh, primarily, and I threw in some extra stuff there. So uh, this has been Mike from Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody, I'm out. Like.